Hey, it's Tyler with Lowbrow Customs. Today we're gonna to show you how to install one of these hardtails, which are for 82 to 2003 Sportsters onto this bike. This one's a 1988. It's quick and easy. Follow along with us and uh, you can have this done in an afternoon very easily. So the bike as it sits is pretty much ready uh, how you should have your bike prepared to hardtail it. So basically removed everything, you know, all the main components. Uh, the last things are, you know, the wheel and front end. You can leave them on at this point, or you can have those off and just have your frame and motor uh, kind of preference. So the first thing that we're gonna do is pull the motor out of the frame so we can measure and cut the frame. Uh, you've got a, a front motor mount, top motor mount. Those can be unbolted, completely removed. And then the motor unbolts at the front and rear, and we're gonna pull it completely out of the frame. So we've got all of the hardware removed, all the motor mount plates removed. This motor is just sitting here uh, on the spacers uh, and will be on the cradle here. Uh, to pull this out of the frame, it's gonna come out of the right side. I'm gonna grab this and shift it forward very slightly to release the rear. And then I'm gonna tip it toward myself, throw it on the table. I may have a block of wood ready to support the front so the motor doesn't fall over. Uh, that's about it. So now that the motor's out of the frame, uh, I'm gonna show you where to pull measurements from to scribe your frame, your stock frame, and show you where to cut. Uh, I might mention, so the hardtail's already slugged. These are machined, solid slugs here on the lower rails and a piece of tubing on the top, which allows you to run internal wiring through your backbone if you desire. When you cut this, what we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, mark it out and cut it and then go ahead and, and grind the tubes, make sure they're totally flat. What we're gonna really aim for once it's ground and everything's nice and square is about an eighth inch gap between the stock lower frame rail tubing and the tubing of the hardtail. That, that gap roughly an eighth inch is gonna, uh, when you weld, it's gonna allow pe good penetration on uh, the slug as well as both tubes. So all three pieces can be really nice, strong weld. And uh, you've got some, some leeway here. I mean, if you cut and you grind a little too much or something and it's a quarter inch gap, that's fine. It's not gonna be a strength or structural issue whatsoever. And really all these joints get hidden um, with the motor and gas tank on. So uh, you've got a little leeway on these measurements. Uh, first measurement I'm gonna pull here. We're, I'll, I'll show you how it corresponds to the hardtail. This flat plate here at the rear motor mount is the same measurement as far as in relation to the motor as the face of these bungs here on the rear motor mount. So what I'm gonna do is just pull a measurement using a square. This is just a common square you can get anywhere. And I'm gonna go ahead and keep the lower run parallel to the tube and just butt it right against the corner of that, of that block there. And uh, you can see uh, pretty clear, it's right at six inches to the end of this tube. So what we need to do on the stock frame, and it's a little different with the, the way the rails are, and such are bent here, but you're gonna butt the square against the face of that bung Hold this ruler so it's parallel to the lower frame rail. And then easiest way to do this is just to scribe a mark right into your paint. And so right here at the six inch mark, I just went ahead and did a little scribe. Uh, you can go ahead and deepen that. Uh, I'll go ahead and do the same thing on the other side. And uh, for the upper mount, we're gonna pull a dimension coming from the rear of the top motor mount bracket, right where it meets the frame, and that's gonna be a, a 9 sixteenths back on this top tube. For that, you use just a standard ruler, this little machine of scale, uh, and so I'm just gonna go ahead and line it up, and same thing, I'm just gonna scribe it 9 sixteenths, move the ruler, deepen it. And uh, you do wanna hold this parallel to the tube to get an accurate measurement. Okay, so I went ahead and scribed a little line there at 9 sixteenths. I'll mark that other side, and uh, we'll probably pull the rear wheel off before we cut this, just to make it a little easier. All right, so rear wheel's off, this thing's ready to cut. We're gonna go ahead and cut the rear section of the frame off. Uh, we're using a Sawzall for the job. This works great. You could also use a grinder with a cutoff wheel, a hacksaw, you know, whatever you prefer. All right, let's cut it.
and there we go. Ready to slip the hardtail in uh, once we clean up uh, and deburr the inside of these, these holes. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and drill through the lower and upper frame rail to get some rosette welds once a new hardtail slipped in. Uh, the rear spacers are stepped, so there's no way those can, can move, but the top piece is a tube, and the rosette weld will hold that in place and offer um, a little stability while we go ahead and weld around the tubes. Let's do it. All right, so we cross drilled through both lower rails, which will, uh, that'll be used to rosette weld the slug to the tube before we weld around there. Also cross drilled the top of the backbone uh, and put a chamfer around the outside edge of all of these tubes. That allows, uh, make sure you get really good weld penetration between both pieces of tubing and the slug. Uh, you can just do that with like a, a, anything, a grinder, flap disc, whatever. Uh, the other thing we did was clean up inside of the tubing here. This was actually, uh, being a bit of an older frame, pretty rusty and crusty. Uh, you can use a die grinder with like a barrel sander like that, you know, work around in there. Make sure you get in for the full depth of the sleeves uh, or a, a little flap disc will work. Um, little die grinder bit, pretty much, you know, a little bird bit, any, any, anything you can to clean that up in there. And then you can test fit this uh, because these are going in at different angles. Uh, usually you've got to use a rubber mallet to send this home, but if you just kind of offset it, you can test and see that that goes fully seated home on both sides. You can even tilt this. Make sure, there you go, the backbone. So it all slides in so we know these holes are all open and there's no restriction there. To send this home, what you're going to want to do is use a rubber mallet, you know, varying sizes, whatever you need. Uh, the big one right here. Uh, don't beat on this with a, you know, with a metal hammer or ball peen or anything. So what we're going to do is um, go ahead and line these up and I'm going to probably smack right here with the rubber mallet and uh, get these started sliding in there. There can be a little bit of tension depending on the display of the frame rails here. So, um, you know, it's usually why you got to use a mallet to, to tap it in. Uh, one thing we noticed on here is when I go to line these lower slugs up, the stock frame is just a hair wider, sprung a little wider than the hardtail. So uh, you could do something simple like this clamp and just give it a little bit of tension, adjust it so these are just the right width. There we go, it's sliding right in. So the reason the mallet comes into play is because you've got conflicting angles on this plane and this plane. So Typically, you're gonna to need to give it a few whacks to get this seated. We've got the hardtail slid in place. We threw the rear wheel on it uh, just to support it and uh, got together our hardware and the tools needed. What we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab the engine, get it into position, getting a kind of exact opposite of how we pulled it out as far as tipping it in, getting the sump in between the rails and then sliding it back so the dowels uh, in, engage the, uh, the holes here on the rear motor mount plate, and it's handy to have another set of hands around. So while I'm holding the motor, 
Tim can get the, uh, the hardware started in place. We're gonna go ahead and bolt the motor up <coughs> to all the different stock points and then to the rear here. And that's, that motor is gonna serve as our fixture for tack welding the frame. It's gonna ensure that we have a proper fit with the engine. Uh, you don't wanna go ahead and just weld this thing up because your motor will probably not fit. All right. Tip it towards you. And then you gotta lift up. There you go. Yeah, it needs to go up a little. There we go. Right, with the help of, uh, of Tim, a pry bar, got that, uh, got that engine located there. And so now I'm just kind of holding it steady while he gets the hardware started. And then we'll go around and just bolt it all up, tighten it up. Motor's back in the frame. And we went ahead and installed all of the motor mounts and hardware. Don't skip this step. Don't try and you know, save yourself two minutes by only partially bolting stuff in. All hardware on the rear mounts. You got your top motor mount bolt to the frame. You got your front plates and then this upper front mount as well. Uh, again, it's just, this is all the stock mounting hardware. Uh, this is shorter mounting bolts, but same idea. Uh, everything is bolted up, torqued into place. You might have to, um, you know, rock your motor a little, getting these bolts all situated, but it's pretty straightforward. Uh, again, do not get the hardtail fit up and just weld or tack or anything. Your engine serves as the jig for this hardtail. So this is imperative. It's like the most important thing you can do to not screw up <laughs> your hardtail install. So bolt this in uh, like we did now, it's sitting right where it needs to be. And the next step is going to be uh, putting some solid tack welds. We're, we're gonna TIG weld this. So in our case, it's gonna be, uh, we can just leave this uncovered. This TIG welding doesn't throw sparks. You know, if you're MIG welding, you might wanna cover your motor uh, or, or whatever, that's up to you. But we're gonna go ahead and throw some nice heavy tacks, probably a few around the top and two or three around the bottom. And then the next up, uh, what we would typically do is finish weld everything possible with the bike as it sits. Uh, and then we will end up pulling the motor back out of the frame for the final finish welding. And, uh, and that's it, that's the end of the job. So uh, we'll get welding. There we go. So uh, that's basically it for this hardtail installation. Uh, we're not gonna bother showing you on film, but we're gonna pull the motor back out and then weld to the areas we couldn't get to with the motor installed. If necessary, you know, you can flip it on its side. If you pull the front end and the wheel off, it's really easy. You can turn it any way you want. Basically though, you're just gonna finish, finish weld everything up there and you're ready to move on to the next phase of your project. If you liked uh, this video, you can click follow below and you'll see all the latest videos from Lowbrow Customs. Uh, we're constantly filming new how-tos, event coverage, all kinds of great stuff. Uh, you can pick up your own hardtail at lowbrowcustoms.com. And if there's questions, comments, anything you wanna say, say it in the comments below and we'll be sure to read them and respond to you. Thanks so much for watching. <music>